Hey, um, as I touched on the first time, my TAI is to do with problem solving and particularly um, doing sort of rich activities in maths. Is that going to bleed into or extend into them becoming problem solvers in all of their learning? So that's what my TAI is. Um, how are these readings and videos um, helping me with my TAI? Well, I actually have two tabs. I have what's called my maths tab and I have my inspiration tab. And I'm finding that probably more of the things that I am noting and more of the things that I'm watching is to do with my inspiration, which means it's about problem solving as a whole or the pedagogy of your approach as a whole rather than just maths. And that is therefore making me challenge what I'm thinking and doing in maths as well as all the other learning. So it's not specific to maths, that's what I'm finding. Um, so um, it helps me because it makes me curious about what's out there. Um, it makes me go searching for things that will challenge or clarify or... Um, confirm what I'm thinking. Um, so that how that's how my TAI helps me. Um, the next question we have to look at is the impact of your TAI and what it's having on your teaching practice. Um, I've always had sort of in the in my in the background of my brain my approach and, and being clear in what I do and why I do things. But it's really, really interesting to listen to people that have a similar approach and how they articulate that. And it makes me think even deeper about what I'm doing or what I'm thinking. And um, I really like it sometimes because I can tap myself on the back, I suppose. But other times it makes me really challenge what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and being able to articulate it to somebody else. So, and having to drop the notes down. So it's kind of like it. it of all the mushed up, mixed up stuff that goes on, it makes you really clarify what you're doing instead of it just sitting in the background and ticking along. So I, I really like that sort of part of it. Um, it's it, And then it, it then cements what I'm doing and the beliefs that I have in the approach of um, what's needed for the kids to get them to expand what they're thinking. But... Um, in, in concreting what I know, it doesn't make me inflexible either. Um, I, if anything else, it makes me broaden and look further. Um, so I like the way that it challenges me like that. Um, there's some really, really neat people out there. Um, this lady's pretty amazing. Um, which I'll talk about at the end, I guess, because that's my last question. Um, the shift in kids that um, I've seen in relation to my TAI about problem solvers, I guess the biggest shift I'm actually seeing, which has really surprised me, is in my more able and more established learners. The children can do, especially down in the younger levels, if they're um, accelerating and, and heading off and zooming with their learning and going through the levels, they can actually become quite inflexible. Um, they can, because they're so focused, they're just wanting to go to that level, that level, that level, rather than looking sideways. And that's something I've been really conscious of as a teacher. And what I'm finding this year, because we are basing a lot of our stuff around questioning, they are questioning, which is which is really cool, but they're not only questioning each other in what they're reading, they're also questioning me. So hang on a minute, Miss Wee Painter, yesterday you said <laughs> da 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 da, which I think is really, really mm. exciting. Um, and it's and the other thing that's happening is that instead of looking to me to extend them or question them, um, they're doing that themselves. They're um, one of the, the lead um, sentences in room 11 at the moment is, how about we try this? Or how about we do this? What would, you know, we could do such and such. And, and it's, it's not just coming from one or two children, it's coming from a lot of them. So um, 
I'm actually seeing some really big shifts in, in the children that are at or above um, in their ability to look at a problem and try it a different way, and that flexibility, which I think comes also um, from Dinah's approach where being able to explain what you do in different ways and being able to approach a problem in different ways. Um, so that, that's definitely bleeding in or extending into, into other areas of their learning. Um, and then it made me look at what, what my, least, le my least established learners are doing. If, if my ats and abubs are booming <coughs> off and going sideways and extending themselves, what's happening with the other ones? They're, I, they're asking the same questions and they're, and they're looking at things in a wider viewpoint, but they're still building that foundation, which I think is really important. I, I am conscious of them having to move, but I'm also m wanting to make sure that they're not moving too fast, that their foundation's not stable. So, um, someone who really shines <coughs> in the classroom for how about we do this this way is Toad Eddie, and he, um, yeah, he's fantastic at looking at things flexi flexible. Um, he, yeah, and he's not actually at as yet, even though he's quite a clever young lad. Um, he's still gathering himself, and um, he won't be long off being at. But um, yeah, so yeah, I didn't expect my my more established readers to be the ones that are zooming ahead and going up four and five levels. It's it's exciting. Um, I'm waiting for that to happen with the other ones, which I'm sure it will. Um, the best reading or video I've used, well, that's really hard because I've actually found so many amazing people. Um, this lady grew up in Philadelphia. She's a principal. She um, went to a school that wasn't a real school, which is how she explained it. And one of her students in her, she decided to make her career um, of into break breaking, sorry, fixing broken schools. Um, and the very first broken school she went into, um, she called an assembly after breaking up a number of fights and wanted to lay down the law of what things were going to be like with her as principal. And this girl stood up at the back of the room and said, Miss, this isn't a school. Stop calling it a school. It's not real. This is not a real school. Because the kids weren't actually getting a chance to learn anything. It was too much you know, fighting and issues going on that the kids felt like they weren't really there to have a chance to learn anything. I um, mean, she said she went to a school like that. So she talks about how she goes about changing a school. And she's, yeah, she's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, and there's lots of tips on how she does that. And she's done it in three different schools already. Um, this one was really cool, it's called Hacking, Hacking Education, and basically um, it's making your own way in education and making it happen for you, and um, actually taking education out of the school, so kids actually leave school to further their education, it's, it's really clever, I really enjoyed watching that. This one here though is probably my favourite, um, and I shall play it for you. Imagine the awesomest thing you can. Like to me, that's really, really powerful. And it's something that we're striving for with our experiences, that we kick everything off with a question, and it's not about the answers. Um, the power's in the question. Thank you. Cool. Are there any questions? <laughs> the duck might want one. <laughs>